Bert here with HVAC School. Uh, we're here with one of our sponsors has come out to help actually make this event happen. They've been with us each year. This is the fourth symposium. Welcome guys. We're gonna show off some of the stuff that they have here. There's a lot of really cool products around. I wish you could all be here. Wish you could actually walk to these tables maybe next year. But in the meantime, let's just do a video, talk about what you brought out. What okay. do you got? Um, so hi guys, my name's Nick with Inficon. I'm um, going to talk to you guys about the Stratus today. So, all right, this has uh, quickly become one of our most popular leak detectors, and that's for good reason. Um, basically, what this has done is made leak detection uh, really easy, and it does that through um, PPM and the numeric display. And so, what we're doing is we're quantifying the background. So, uh, the closer you are to the leak, the higher the number. So parts per million? In parts per million, yeah. Wow, that's a lot of accuracy. And so, uh, you know, you're using that as a, as a gauge, a, a okay. game of hot and cold. So oh, okay. again, the higher the number, mm -hmm. the closer you are to the leak, the lower the number, or as it starts to decrease, you know that you're starting to get away from the leak. So um, using that really cuts down leak detection time. And, and when you're in a high background environment, mm -hmm. um, you can really start to see, you know, where the area is that this is coming from, or uh, that guidance beca can become really useful. So, so walking into a whole space, you just walk right. in the room and here we go. Right. We're gonna so slowly pinpoint which direction I need to go. Exactly. So when yeah. I walk into the room and I start to see one, two, three PPM, I know I've got an issue in the space. Um, so as I keep walking, I'm going to pay attention to that number. Um, and as I move closer to the leak again, yeah, I'm getting that guidance, even if there is a background. So if you look at a traditional leak detector where mm -hmm. maybe you just have some LED indication and sure. some, some noise, mm -hmm. um, it's going to go off and that can get a little confusing um, or it takes a little, little more time to navigate it really yeah. where that is. And, and really you're navigating from kind of a far distance away with this where these other leak detectors where you have the traditional LEDs, mm -hmm. you're kind of indicating, you know, when you're when you're close to that leak, but actually trying to pinpoint. So yeah. cloud hunting is really the, the new feature wow. uh, that this helps with. Um, Which couple is of, great when you have a room full of multiple compressors and different components that could be leaking. Exactly. And, you, and the whole room's filled with it. If I just take in any other leak detector, it's just going to go off. It's just going to be upset that I'm in the room. Exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and a couple other features that we've done is um, serviceability of the product is a lot easier now with a, a removable probe. Um, we also have our filter that's a um, hydrophobic filter, so okay. no water is going to get inside. All, All you right, have to do is see this. unscrew this top here. And so now you've got that, that filter that comes out. Okay. And you just check to see if it's, uh, if it's dirty. If it is, just replace it. Go ahead and screw this cap back on. As sad as it is, the number one issue we've had is people damaging it with water. <laughs> yeah, another issue that we have is, uh, you know, sometimes probes go bad, right? Mm -hmm. So rather than having to send the leak detector back in, mm -hmm. this is field replaceable. You just use a wrench here. Unscrew I that. wouldn't I wouldn't use your, your hands, hand. right? It's definitely, <laughs> remove it with the uh, with the wrench. Okay. Um, yeah. Another thing would be the, the batteries, right? So uh, removable lithium ion nice. battery. Okay. Um, that you, we, we also provide a, a charging cradle okay. as an accessory. Um, and then we have three different sensors that go into this and I'm going to keep this running for the demonstration but this is what our new sensors look like. Okay. Uh, so a little more robust than our older sensor but it uses an infrared technology so um, we kind of use the analogy it's like a razor blade uh, for the older ones where um, you know the more you, you use them they would degrade yeah. over time mm -hmm. but with the infrared uh, it's going to work the same you know, the day you start it to the day that sensor quits. And, um, you know, we've done some testing now. We're up to 2,000, about about 2,000 hours of use oh, wow. um, out of one sensor versus a standard 100 hour okay. estimation of use. So, um, so you have three sensors here. What's the, why, why yeah. do you have the three different? So there's different windows mm -hmm. um, that sensors use uh, for different gases. Okay. Um, so the refrigerant sensor is a standard sensor that's going to come with the unit, but you also have the option to buy the CO2 sensor. Oh, nice. And now we have a hydrocarbon sensor for okay. smart, small charge equipment. Sure. Um, not, not really for natural gas or anything like that, right. but, mm -hmm. but yeah, for R290, R600, that stuff. Okay. Um, that's that's really what and it's, it's used for. And it's just plug and play into yep. the same piece of equipment. Yeah. So at the end, I'll show you. I'll pull this out. But okay. while we have it running, um, we'll do a little demonstration here. So that's our tech check. It's okay. basically just a, a quick check for um, just making sure your leak detectors are working. Okay. So that's 
again, 134A at about five grams per year. Nice. And what we've done with this demo is we've kind of um, let the concentrations build up to kind of simulate as you go through a room yeah. what this leak detector would look like. As I walk into the room, turn on the sound. Let's see if you can see the parts per million. We're at 26 parts per million. Yep. So as I start moving closer to that leak, I'm going to see those parts per million increase, yeah. right? Yeah. So I know nice. I'm getting close to that leak. And as I start to move away, that number will start to come down. I know I'm, I'm going away. So it really wow. is that game of hot and cold. Uh, and that responded really quick. Right. Wow. And so really what it's doing is it's, it's taking a, a reference from inside of the cavity of the, the device and mm -hmm. it's comparing it to the outside mm -hmm. of the cavity. So you have that reference point and you know, um, that's what's really giving you the, the PPM. And, and uh, if you have areas where you have really large concentration, like a, a, a fast leak in a, mm -hmm. a closer space, I mean, uh, it holds up fine in there as far as like the sensor. Yeah, and, and so, And being you know, able to pinpoint that, because that's sometimes, the, the stronger the leak, sometimes it can be harder to pinpoint because everything is just saturated with that. So again, what we're saying is when we're looking at a reference, mm -hmm. um, or a reference sample, I should say, versus the actual sample in the device, mm -hmm. Um, I'm always going to have a differential, so that's always going to give me um, a higher number versus a, a lower yeah. number, yeah. Um, you know, when walking into a high concentration. So I'm really, you know, the PPM's nice, but what it's really achieving is uh, the guidance to the leak. So yeah. um, whether it tells me 10 and I go to 20 or 200 and I go to 400 PPM, yeah. it still is the same, same guidance. So. Cool. Um, it performs well in, in high concentrations. Love to hear that. Um, the other thing with this is we've got a couple different uh, modes with this. So once you've got yourself to the leak, when you really want to pinpoint, you know, a, a joint or something like that, um, we have pinpoint mode. Pinpoint mode, okay. So this is on automatic, um, mm -hmm. automatic z or zero. Okay. So as you're in a high concentration, um, you're going to uh, auto zero to assert that concentration and sure. only alert to the next highest concentration. So it's like a reset for that. It is that so that level. way you're not mm -hmm. you're not alarming, um, you know, just randomly throughout the yeah. the the high background area. Exactly. Okay. Um, the next that. one is the manual zero. So this is just giving you a little more control. Mm -hmm. So as I'm in the area, if I want to control where that zero point is going to be, what I'll do is hit that manual zero. And that's going to manually zero to that that specific spot. Okay. And then as I move forward, okay, that's yeah. it'll always trigger off of that yeah that zero or that reference point. And so in that mode, it just shows you it just basically is a bar here that we're reading. Yeah, out, it's so. like a it's a, mm -hmm. just a bar grip that just goes up and down. Yep. Okay. So I love it. So yeah. Cool. So that's that's what we have. That's the stress. Cool. Well, we'll probably be back to look over at some of your other toys, but uh, thanks for showing that. And yeah, also, absolutely. thanks for what you guys have done at supporting what we do here and absolutely bringing training to the industry. Really, really appreciate having you We appreciate you guys here. being here. Sweet. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.